thousands of years ago, they were Apollo, Zeus, Ares. Now they are Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and the other heroes and villains of DC and Marvel Comics. Let's get heroic. Welcome to Under Two Capes, the podcast for the comic book fan. Welcome to Under Two Capes. I am Jared. And I'm Lad. And we're actually going to give you two episodes this week, people, because I finally sat down and watched Masters of the Universe Revelation and yeah. most of He-Man the Masters of the Universe on Netflix. I figured, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. And our videos talk, um, doing anything Masters of the Universe related always get like a lot of views. So I figured couldn't <laughs> hurt. Yeah. So I was coming into this series. Because let me say, I'm a fan of the old 2002 show because that was badass. Mm -hmm. All right. So I was coming to the show with negative expectations as hell because I had seen all the, I kind of knew what they were going to do with it because I watched a bunch of reviewers talk about it that, oh my gosh, it changes stuff. And all got into that, but it actually was not that bad at all. I was really surprised. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I thought it's supposed to be bad. That's cool. And I'm like, yeah. okay. so like, so the first episode is just basically a, a He-Man episode where it's like uh, Skeletor actually attacks Castle Grayskull and Skeletor is voiced by Mark Hamill. So whenever he spoke, I heard the Joker. Yeah. I was like, oh, and he made Joker jokes. So I'm like, oh my gosh, you're basically Joker as Skeletor. That's so great. And then, so Tila is being like made the new master at arms, or no, no uh, um, the new man at arms. I guess, mm -hmm. I guess, woman at arms. She knows that uh, that man of a uh, man at arms is her father, right? Except I don't think she knows that the prince, that the uh, that the magician Arthur. that gives him his powers is her mother. I don't think yeah, she knows so that. But so, and then, so the, the attack happens. Everyone just uh, conveniently files out of the throne room, leaving Adam alone with Cringer. Then he's like, yeah. all right, let's do this. By the power of Grayskull. And they have this really dope, like morphing sequence, I guess. And then oh, what's really? so funny is that Cringer takes one look at him and just runs because he knows what's <laughs> about to happen next. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it's so great. Cringer actually talks in this series too. Unlike in oh, the 2002 good. series. So, so yeah. and I love He Man. He's just like, all right, he just blasts him with the sword and that turns him into Battle Cat. Yeah. Again, how does no one at least make the Battle Cat connection? Right. Yeah. I'm like, all right. So He Man falls out or, or rolls a casual gray skull and just wrecks shop. Like when he punches the ground, it creates shockwaves like he's Superman. Nice. He basically is Barbarian Superman. All right. The whole time watching the show, I was like, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be really dope if like they did a Wonder Woman He-Man crossover comic? Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I mean it they, fits. I mean they had Injustice and He-Man, right? Yeah, and they did normal DC as in the new 52 DC He-Man. Really? And I know Wonder Woman has crossed over with Conan the Barbarian, but I'm like, He-Man. Yeah, what universe so cool. fits Wonder Woman more than He-Man? I know. It'd be really cool. Yeah, it'd be really dope. Uh, so anyway, then uh, so Skeletor makes it to like the core of the castle where He-Man gets his powers. He and He-Man fight. And then uh, Tila shows up and, and fights Evelyn or Evil Lynn. But yeah, Evil okay. Lynn. There you go. They have really interesting names in this show. Yeah, it's a great name, right? By the way, I think Evil Lynn is, is voiced by the girl that was like the queen in 300. Mm. I think. The voice sounded very familiar. Yeah. So they fight, and then it turns out uh, the sword was actually a key. And oh. the key unlocks like this vault of knowledge, like where magic comes from. This magical orb comes up with Skeletor promptly breaks, which is going to destroy the, the universe, but, but um, the, 
the princess says, uh, uh, like freezes time and tells He-Man, you got to do something. Otherwise everything blows up. So what He-Man does is, is he calls down the lightning, but then A, it, uh, it, it breaks the sword in two because they retcon that, that the sword is actually two blades oh, okay. and it kills He-Man and Skeletor. Oh, so he's, that's where the first episode ends. Actually, it's at that point, because when he dies, he reverts back to Adam, and that's how she finds out who he is. She's like, wait. <laughs> and then she, she, like, leaves because apparently most people, knew, like, man at arms and the queen yeah. knew who, who, uh, who Prince Adam, Orko, yes. Like, yeah, Orko is fantastic. Everyone, yeah, everyone but Tila. Tila. So then the ser- so then in episode two the series like jumps forward I think like a couple of years, and uh, T- Tila's a mercenary and she's hired by by this um, mysterious witch to uh, to retrieve this goblet. The goblet's not really that important, but the the, the witch ends up being e- evil Lynn. Mm. She brings her to, to Castle Grayskull, where the um, the magician is like, listen. Universe is going to be destroyed soon because there's no magic because that's right. ma- that's Link, and I and we need you to get the sword back, go into what is essentially He Man Hell and He Man Heaven and get those two halves of the sword. Because what happens <laughs> is that the good half, I guess, good air quotes, goes into the goes to to the heaven part, and and, and the evil one air quotes go goes down to hell. So. <laughs> So they also need um, someone who can reforge the two halves into a sword. So, so they go to recruit Man at Arms, but he's like a hermit, tending to Orko because Orko, being a magical being, has to is like dying because uh, uh, magic is slowly, slowly leaving Eternia. Mm. So they don't recruit Duncan; they recruit his robot assistant that has all of his. M- uh, memories. I think his name is like Roboto or something like that. Oh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So they recruit him to reforge the sword. So they roll out. They, they hop on a boat and, and then they come under attack by Merman, who is voiced by Kevin freaking Conroy. Yes, Merman. I was like, wait a second, is that Batman? And then, mm. by, by the way, the entire series. They're doing little, uh, uh, like flashbacks to He-Man uh, f- fighting alongside uh, Tila. So He-Man is in this show a fair amount. It's not like they kill him off in the first episode and then he's gone. So so he's like there because he's back in flashbacks and stuff? Or Think of it like this. It's like in the Snyder Cut where Superman was there for the first half of the movie in spirit. Okay. It's pretty much like that. Everyone's reflecting on Adam. Tila is still pissed that no one told her, including Adam. (laughs) And that comes to a head later. So they get the hell sword, except so they find this being that basically feeds off of fear. And he's like, okay, so I'll give you the sword if you let me feel off, if you let me uh, feed off your fear. So she's like, all right. And and, and then she kills, uh, then she, she defeats him. They're about to leave, but then the, that same creature comes at them, and Orko has to sacrifice himself, so Orko dies. What? Orko dies. Except he dies like a boss. He's holding off this giant magical creature, blasting him. It's so dope. That, that was another part that angered fans. And then they end up in, in the heaven dimension. Then they run into Prince Adam. Ah. So, in the heaven dimension, Adam... <laughs> Adam and his friends are like in the middle of like a big hunt. Apparently, it's it's like a regular game. <laughs> and then, who should be leading the pack is uh, King Grayskull. Oh, my and god! The key thing is that everyone else is in their champion forms, in other words, their He-Man forms, except for Prince Adam. Because when you go to heaven, you get to choose what form you're in heaven in. He chose to be <laughs> Prince Adam instead of He-Man. Interesting. And they even say this. So like. No one's ever done that before. Mm-hmm. So they reforge the sword. Uh, I, I'm doing. Uh, I, I'm going like f- fast through this. So yeah, they reforge the sword at the sacrifice of Roboto. So he dies, mm-hmm. and then uh, Prince Adam goes back with them because you can leave heaven. But the thing is, 
you can't go back. So if you die, you die. But what would it... Okay, I'll accept so, that. So, they have the Reforged Sword and, and Prince Adam. They, go, they run to Castle Grayskull in the middle of this big battle. And they get him inside at the nick of time. And he raises his, his, the sword and says, by the power of Grayskull, revitalizing magic, except then Skeletor returns and stabs him through the stomach with a spear. Mid-transformation. Huh? And incapacitates him. I don't think he killed him. He was stabbed in the stomach. Okay. If he were stabbed <laughs> in this region, I'd be like, yeah, he's dead. No, no, no. Plus the fact, if you're familiar with anything with pop culture, they're going to bring him back. And what, and what is this? Wait a second. Okay, I got a problem with this because, listen, it is a known rule that all villains follow is when the hero is undergoing a transformation sequence, you are not allowed to attack them. Like the Power Rangers, like the Transformers, you know, like when they're combining or the Power Rangers are morphing, you have to wait for them, everyone to do their motto and do their poses. You can't attack someone mid-transformation. That's cheap. That's a cheap move. We're talking about Skeletor here. Do you really think he cares? He, he has to follow the rules of the villain rules. That's not fair. The world is not fair, lad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, I, I gotta be honest. I was like, why hasn't anyone ever done this before? Yeah, they make a joke about this in the in the newer He Man like three D um Netflix show, and I'll touch on that when we when we get to that series. Mm. But uh, so and then Skeletor gets the sword and be becomes a god essentially. And that's where the ser where the five episodes leave it. All right. With that little cliffhanger. So, once again, I liked it. I thought it was pretty dope. Mm. Mm -hmm. I know some people are upset that they freaking kill He-Man, but I'm like, okay, first off, he's not dead. Very clearly, he's just stabbed yeah. through the stomach. He, yeah. There's no way they're going to kill He-Man. Kevin Smith himself confirmed on Twitter he's coming back. Yeah. The whole entire cast has said he's, he's not permanently dead because they know that's stupid. You can't kill He-Man. Yeah. So I'm like, that's why I'm, I'm confident that whenever they, in their infinite wisdom, decide to release the, the five, uh, the, um, the, 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 next half of the series that they're going to bring him back hmm. now going to the 2000 to the newer 3d animation he-man show this one's very clearly more like this is not really a show um a market toward mature audiences like revelation is yeah but i like it because well what's kind of funny is that they change a lot like Man at arm slash Duncan is like a teenage kid. Oh, really? And then apparently, what happens is that Prince Adam can uh, it can when he goes by the power of Gray Skull, he powers up the sword. He can share his power, so everyone he basically he mans out and becomes the masters of the universe. So it essentially turns into Power Rangers every episode. They morph. <laughs> that's kind of cute, though. I imagine like for new, for you know, modern audiences, that's like an interesting telling of the story. But. They did address that time. Go that time passes while they're transforming because he goes because I'm go goes we are we have the power and then Dunk is like oh nice dude and then he goes yeah thank you I thought about it while you were transforming <laughs> so I'm like nice. I, I, at least they put that in I'll, I'll appreciate that mm -hmm. yeah so it, but here's the thing this show is He Man in name only yeah there is it's bare. If you just watched it without knowing it was He-Man, you would think it's another sci-fi show. That is it. Hmm. And it leans more into the... Like, Cringer is an actual brave tiger, which is odd. Yeah. But, uh, and then apparently, so, Prince Adam um, doesn't know who he is, so he hangs out with what's called the Tiger Tribe. So what happens is, is they keep the whole Prince Adam is like a Prince of Eternia, but um, let's see, how do I how do I describe this? Um, but uh, he 
when Skeletor, who is apparently He-Man's uncle in this series, um, took mm. over, he uh, uh, Prince Adam w- was like s- was sent away, and when he was sent away, his mind was wiped. And then he's slowly starting to remember who he is. Hmm. So it's it's an interesting series. But of the two, I like Re- Revelation a lot more. Yeah, like that's fair. I'm surprised at how much I actually enjoyed that. I was like, uh, because again, I was going at it from a negative, with already uh, um, a, a, a negative preconceived notions in my mind. Because once again, I, um, I I saw all the review shows and everything, and I, I get there was like an idea that, that they were going to replace He Man with Tila, which. Mm-hmm. Nowhere, anywhere has that been marketed by the people. It was mainly just fan speculation. Right. So I'm like, okay, guys, there are fan speculations that I think that Batman and Wonder Woman make a good couple. So <laughs> that's, that's one for fact. you, lad. That's what, no, no, that's fan fiction. <laughs> 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 I got uh, you. Okay. All right. All right. I, you just walked, you set me up so well for that oh, one, bro. Boy, I, I was I like, it. I got, got it. it. You got me. But yeah, but, but generally, this got me interested in collecting He-Man stuff. Like I made check out the comics, mm-hmm. and I saw that they have some pre- pre- pretty dope action figures. Oh yes, yes. Because He-Man was originally created j- just to sell toys. And by the way, if you hear noise, I'm unboxing some pops. Well, mm-hmm. we'll turn this also into an unbo- uh, unboxing. <laughs> so anyway. So for those of you that that know me right now, I am in the per, I'm in the process of collecting anything that's associated with the Snyder Cut. So yes. I recently started collecting uh, pops. So I got the Diana Prince one. Mm. That and she has the arrow of Artemis that that was used to signal her. And then I got Gasad. Yes, Gasad. Because they're on because they're on Amazon for for pretty cheap. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I, I, I got to find a good place to put those. I wonder if, it, if they come in any um, stands. Oh, yes, they do. At least the Wonder Woman one does. But anyway, that's what I thought of the He-Man show, lad. Any thoughts? Uh, no, it sounds... I, I like your take of it. Yeah, I felt like people were maybe bashing on the Master of the Universe a little too much. But it seems like, you know, they're not making Tila necessarily the main character, but they are well, she, she was the main. Ca- she was basically the main character in these five a- episodes. Right, right. Now, he, here's now, I'm going to directly address the He-Man a- a- um, a- a- um, absence. Yes, he's not really like in the show actively, but they show him in flashbacks, and really, it's He-Man in spirit. It's essentially like how in Zack Snyder's Justice League, Superman was not in there for like. I'd say about two and a half hours into a four hour movie, two and a half to three hours, right? I still can't believe I watched that movie four times. But besides (laughs) the point, it's that same idea how, yeah, you feel his presence throughout the series. Because remember, Mm -hmm. He Man is their version of Superman. Let's face it, not only in sheer strength, but the whole hope factor. Right. So I feel like at that point, um, so uh, I feel like the, it's fine that way and they're obviously going to bring him back because what I noticed in the past year of becoming well-versed in pop culture, whenever they change the status quo in any way, shortly thereafter, they will go back. Mm-hmm. It's inevitable. So I don't know why people get, get so... Yeah, exactly. The snap. I don't know why people get, get so upset. But that's besides the point. But it so makes anyway, a good YouTube thumbnail. It makes a good YouTube thumbnail, and they're obviously not replacing T- a He Man with Tila. They're very clearly not doing that. And mm-hmm. to address the thumbnail where He Man is lying on the ground bleeding, do you really think they're go- in a world with magic? Even Kevin Smith said this on Twitter. Do you really think in a world with magic we're gonna let He Man die? <laughs> this world has magic. Because you're right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm like. So uh, I'm like, uh, I'm excited for the, the rest of the series. I wish they had like released this all at once. 
In other words, not release half the episode and then just left it there for like months because we still, I don't think we have a release date for, for the rest of season one. Right. I, I think you're right. Like either drop it all at once or do a weekly episode so you can yes. follow along with it. Do but not do it this way. Five and then another five like months later is too much of a break where yeah. there was already some suspicion about the series. People were a little bit, you know, uh, unsure about it. It would have been better not to do that, but oh well. Mm -hmm. All right. So, in addition to that, so lad, have you watched any what ifs? Not newer one. I watched the Star Lord what if one. That was All really right, good. So, the fans have heard my th thoughts on the Star Lord uh, one, lad. Let's hear your thoughts. I really, I really enjoyed that episode. I. I didn't think it was gonna be that interesting because I was like, all right, just T'Challa as Star Lord. But it was actually really blew me away that they crafted a whole new storyline out of these characters there. Plus, it's and Chadwick. really, yeah. Plus, it's you know, and like an extra performance by him that we may never see another performance like that again, or we won't. But that was really nice. I really loved how some of the like the twists where they make with. You know, T'Challa, Star Lord, he actually brings out the best in everyone. So, like the Ravagers, including Thanos, are like, including Thanos, that like all I was the like, Ravagers. Wait, what? As soon as, that, <laughs> as soon as I hear Josh Brolin's voice, I was like, How? Yes, that all the Ravagers are like super noble and like you know, even Thanos. And you know, uh, I love how, <laughs> how in this universe everyone knows who Star Lord is. It's not like Star Lord, <laughs> who? Yeah, that, that, was, <laughs> I, that was so funny because a lot of people joke about that meme. So I love that they brought that into it. And he's like, yes. I'm Star, you, you're a Star Lord. Everyone, he, he's Star Lord. Yeah, you know? get your, like, and then and, he, just, he just switches sides. Yeah, that was, that was really funny. He's like, makes a big deal about it. But yeah, that was, that was great. Yeah, I, I like that. I, I liked all the little Easter eggs, like when the when the collector is grabbing stuff off his rack. You see, like Cap Shield, Thor's hammer, uh, mm. Korg's arm. Yeah, I'm like, oh man, that's dark. Right. <laughs> I, I liked I liked that idea that uh, you know they just have the collector be the villain, and it was cool because it was it felt like almost a completely different movie. Like it wasn't just <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy in space. Like it you know, Garden of the Galaxy, but with T'Challa, it actually felt like almost a completely new film idea bringing these characters in and it had a really good storyline. You know, it made sense and it was, it was great. Uh, so many great references and moments in it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that. Um, see, I... <laughs> The only thing I, I am kind of like doubtful of is the whole Thanos being convinced not to wipe out half the universe just because <laughs> T'Challa is Star Lord. I'm well, like, but, that's uh, stretching it. Yeah, I guess because you know T'Challa brings up remember he he like you know made uh you know Kraglin and Taserface they all like you know really Taser noble face. people. I was like I know who you are. I love where where Nebula calls him Cha Cha. Yeah. That's I funny. love Drax, where Drax is grabbing a selfie. And, and that his family is still alive because of yeah. Star-Lord. Yeah. You know, like, well, every, because it's like, <laughs> Thanos did, it didn't do anything. So Right. It, it, it's funny. It's just like everyone's life is better because T'Challa is such a noble person. I'm half <laughs> expecting uh, him to go to Earth and then find out the Starks were never assassinated by the Winter Soldier just because right. T'Challa is Star-Lord. Right. No, that was... That was really funny. Yeah, I noticed that they the what if episodes have been get, have been improving s since the first one because the first one was not a good start mm -hmm. because it was just Cap the Captain America movie but with Peggy Carter. Right, I like this like this one where it's almost like a new story uh, using the characters, not just you know rehashing. Exactly. All right, all right, so. That's our review of He Man and uh, and what if we will be uh, um, addressing more of the what the reason why I, I haven't gotten into the recent what if episodes because Lad hasn't seen them yet. Yeah, I need to catch and up on. I a do few not want to spoil them because this particular one was odd. The Thor one. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, I might just skip ahead to the Thor one. That one looks really good. You should do that. It's really good. Mm -hmm. And something happens in that series that I actually enjoy very much. So, Ooh. so you'll you'll see where oh, when you watch it. But anyway, yep, two that's more episodes. Our, yeah, two more episodes. But yeah, so that's our review of Marvel's What If, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and He Man. So, lot are, are you likely to watch uh, the um? the masters of the universe uh revelation series oh i'll have to see i, I have like a back loss the uh, back list of you know shows but i may get around that's an to it uh, uh, that's, that's an understatement <laughs> lad still has to watch wandavision which is why that was not uh, which is why he was not on the review episode that i did with uh steven i was banned and that wasn't banned he just was a wuss and wouldn't show up <laughs> I, i'm behind someone help <laughs> all right well anyway that's the end of our first episode we're gonna end it here and then we'll be uh, immediately uh releasing another one and the topic of this week is justice league versus avengers who wins and then we'll add in the x-men all mm -hmm. right so stay heroic everyone and we'll see you in the next episode see ya